Well, it sounds like it's gonna be a sweet, sweet lesson today. Apparently, the cast of the movie, Wonka, they are trying different sweets from different countries. The question is, okay, do you think that Willy Wonka would approve this sweet? Just to remind you guys, every week we have a new lesson on this channel to help you understand your favorite movies and TV series without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. You will get a notification as soon as the new lesson is on the channel. If now, you hit that subscribe button and bell down below. These are called Sonha de Valsa. What a treat this is. Does anybody speak Portuguese? Mm -mm. No. Nope. All right, neither do I. However, it stands for a Walt dream. A waltz, a dream. waltz, a waltz dream. dream. Ah. Waltzes in the dance. Yes. From the shape. Yeah, I love the shape. Nice shape. This is more promising from the yes. look of it. Like a little hat. Oh, nice. Got a touch of Ferrero Rocher. This is delicious. Mm -hmm. These it are actually like very known in yeah. Brazil to be given as a romantic gesture. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Yeah. So yeah, these are my romantic gesture to you. Oh. Thank the you. amazing Thank film. You, Do you think Wonka would like these? Personally, these are my favorite. Yeah. yeah. You know, Kayla's not taking them. I mean, no, it, it just tastes like kind of like a Kit Kat to me. Kit Kats are one of my Kit favorites. Kit Kats are great. Yeah. Kit think? Kats are one of my favorites too, but yeah. it does, there's something else oh. in there. Is the nuts is in it? Coconut praline? 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 Stuffed with a cashew cream. Cashew. Ooh. That's yeah. it. There it is. That's what you were looking for. <laughs> you, are we a cashew fan? I am now. You are now. Yeah. Are you a fan? I see a smile. Yeah, it's delicious. I'm slightly in love with it. How about you, Olivia? Would Sweet you like please. this as a romantic gesture? I mean, I'd like anything as a romantic gesture, I think. Beggars <laughs> <laughs> <Vegas, laughs> can't be chosen. Yeah. Very fair. I love it. <laughs> I mean, like, I do it for my daughter and for myself regularly. I like tasting different sweets so much and I like to <laughs> see which one I'd like more. If you watch the movie later, we'll leave the link for our viewers to watch the full episode. So by the end of the movie, they actually chose the Brazilian one as their favorite one. Could you tell me more about this Son Home de Valsa? Yeah, it's just like they said, it's a very popular sweet here in Brazil. You can buy it separately. But normally it comes in boxes okay. of assorted chocolate. There is another variant of that one. And I actually have it here. Let me show oh you. This is the one that I actually prefer uh -huh. right here. This is called Ouro Branco or mm. translated to English with the white gold, you know, something like that. You know, and uh, this is actually my favorite. This is like the counterpart of Soyon de Valsa. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, but because this one is very similar, but... It's covered in uh, white chocolate, okay. you know? The next line here, the host says, I found it interesting because he asked the question, does anybody speak Portuguese? But what I found interesting here in terms of pronunciation is that we usually tend to emphasize, guys, the content words in a sentence and the function words or the auxiliary verbs or articles, prepositions, those words, they tend to be reduced in speech. I heard that he barely pronounces does. He pronounces it, but it's really reduced. He goes like, does anybody, does anybody, does anybody speak Portuguese? But you see, anybody speak Portuguese, those words are more emphasized than does. Yeah, so if we listen to it again, uh, you can hear that. And then the cast says, uh-uh, no. And then he says, neither do I. What does it mean, neither do I? Mm -hmm. Same mm -hmm. And how do you use when it? When we use neither do I, it's uh, it shows that we agree to a statement somebody just said uh, and the statement was negative so they said no we don't speak Portuguese so he says neither do I instead of I also don't speak Portuguese mm -hmm. right and then we have this is more promising from the look of it one of the actors said that something promising is something that promises to be good <laughs> that offers the perspective or opportunity to be cool great in this case, uh, tasty, delicious. So it looks promising. I, I like that they mentioned another popular sweet here in Brazil, Ferrero Rocher. You know, to pronounce more in English, but you know, in Portuguese, it's Ferreiro Rocher. But then uh, this actor says that the Sonho de Valsa sweet has a touch of Ferreiro oh. Rocher. Mm -hmm. What does it mean when something has a touch of something else? In this context, maybe it means a resemblance of. Mm. So it's similar in some way to Ferrero Rocher sweets. Yes, it is true. We usually give 
this as a romantic gesture here in Brazil, this kind of sweet. What is a romantic gesture? <laughs> so romantic gesture means that you are showing interest, a romantic interest in another person by giving them sweets or flowers. Mm -hmm. It's also important to point out that we can change the the word before, the adjective. So here is romantic gesture, but it could be any kind of gesture. It could be a kind gesture as well. Oh, that mm -hmm. was such a kind gesture. Thank you. I think one of the girls, Kayla, I think her name is, uh, she doesn't like it very much or she doesn't find it very impressive. So Timothy says, Kayla is not digging them. When you dig something? Uh -huh. When you dig something, you like it. And actually, it's so good that you caught that, Thiago. He really was like mumbling because he was still chewing and saying <laughs> this word. I, I didn't really catch it. I'm sure you've been learning many new words in this lesson, right? But let me ask you a question. Do you think you'll be able to remember all these new words a week from now? Maybe two weeks from now? Well, if you don't review these words again and again, you will likely forget them. This is really frustrating, isn't it? When you learn a new word or expression here with us, but then when you go out there in the real world and start talking to people, those words just don't come to you. You forget them. Well, there is a very powerful technique that you can implement called space repetition. Space repetition is a learning technique that involves reviewing and revisiting information at increasing intervals over time. The basic idea is to expose yourself to the information you're trying to learn in a way that optimally reinforces your memory. This is an advanced technology that works with your brain's natural tendency for memorization, using intelligent flashcards. As someone who works in English, I can't stress enough how important it is to have an ample vocabulary. And we have made it easy for you to incorporate space repetition in your learning with the Real Life English app. With the app, you can learn tons of words, phrasal verbs, and expressions with our advanced technology that helps to review the words you're trying to remember by presenting the new vocabulary to you at strategic times, so you can never forget the new words and expressions you're learning from this podcast ever again. Thousands of learners just like you already use the app to get confident, natural English. So if you want to go from feeling like a lost, insecure English learner to becoming a confident, natural English speaker who actually remembers the new words you learn, download the app today. I mean, no, it, it, it just tastes like kind of like a Kit Kat to me. Now, this girl, she says, I mean, it just tastes like kind of like a Kit Kat to me. First of all, mm -hmm. the pronunciation here, kind of like, she says, kind of like a. Kind of like a. But what I want to point out, actually, aside from the pronunciation here, guys, is that these are fillers or filler words or expressions. Fillers can be helpful, I would say, but you don't want to overuse them because I think it doesn't make you sound so fluent in the language because she could have just said, it just tastes like a Kit Kat to me. Filler. But maybe it shows her doubt. Like she mm. wasn't sure, maybe she was searching for the word or trying to really taste, understand, is it really like Kit Kat? Yeah. So she used those filler word for that to give her, uh, to give herself time to think. Yeah, which is something normal that we do uh, usually, mm -hmm. right? When we are thinking of mm -hmm. what to say, we feel this need to keep talking. But I would argue, guys, it's not necessary to do that. You can just pause, think, and then you Good keep point. speaking, you know? That's what I would say. We have here, Xenia, cashew cream. What is cashew? Cashew, one of my favorite nuts, actually. <laughs> cashew, I like cashews. This is a kind of nut. Very popular here in Brazil. It's a tropical fruit, I believe. Uh, in Portuguese, in Brazilian Portuguese, we say caju. Yeah, mm -hmm. with a J sound, caju. I was really surprised to see how it looks. So it actually like a fruit, and on top of a fruit, it's this nut. They use a word here, Xena, that I really don't know. I think you do know, because you have a sweet tooth, right? You love sweets. I think praline, is that correct? Yeah, I would say praline. And I think that's a slight British uh, variant to say that. And in Ukraine, we would also say praline. But praline is the... American way to say that. And this is a filling used in the confectionery. Uh, basically, it's a mixture of nuts and sugar, and it's it has a creamy texture. And then, Xenia, we have here, I, I love this part because mm -hmm. apparently Hugh Grant, he liked Sonia de Valsa, but not so much. Because uh, the joke is, we usually give this sweet as a romantic uh -huh. gesture. And then he says, oh, 
uh, I am slightly in love with you now. If you give yeah. me this sweet, slightly <laughs> in love. So what does it mean, slightly in this I, context? Not fully in love. So you're not mad about this person. So slightly in love means not to be crazy in love. Not you are not mad about that other person, right? So you're just slightly, a little bit in love. <laughs> I like that. And finally, we have here this really nice idiom: "Beggars can be choosers." Because I think Olivia, she says, "Oh, I like I like anything," <laughs> as a romantic gesture. And then the other actor responds, "Beggars can be choosers." Do you know what that means? I don't know exactly. I've never heard this um, like idiom or this phrase in any context. But if beggars are those who are asking for something, are like. For example, people on the street who are asking for money, like they can choose what to get as a romantic gesture in this case, right? Like they, what they are given, they accept as a romantic gesture. What is your take on it? No, well, that's that's exactly it. I mean, I like the fact that you explain the words individually. If you get something for free, you can't complain about it. That's basically yeah. what it means. Yeah. So, yeah. if somebody gives you something for free, you can choose or you can complain about it. I mean, you have to accept it and be happy with it. But now we want to hear from you guys. What is one or two typical sweets in your country? Talk about your sweets, share about them here in the comment section below. We want to learn about names of sweets that you guys like out there. Global citizens, thank you very much for learning with us. But you should know that this was just a short clip from the full lesson. The full lesson is available on the Real Life English app. So come on, download the app and continue listening there. You're going to learn even more cool stuff. See you soon.